Okay, today is our special day for what? Sophie, is that your name? Yes. Okay, she has a nickname, Sophie. She's going to ask me a few questions as part of a school project. And of course, she's going to ask more than what the school project entails. So I'll try my best to answer all the Kung Fu questions that she has. Okay, go ahead. Ah, when did I start? Yes. Okay, I started when I was, uh, let's see, I'll give you a quick story. When I was six years old, I wanted to learn Kung Fu, but because we were, I was staying in a very, sort of like a, in the villages, like a bad neighborhood, and my parents don't want me to learn martial arts. So I found a man that was teaching martial arts. Of course, he didn't want to teach me because I had to pay him, I can't afford it. So one day he decided to recruit two kids. It's in the story, you know? You read the story? Yeah, so there are two kids. And uh, I'm not one of the kids that he recruited. So I was very upset. I said to myself, if I ever become a teacher, I make sure people can learn Kung Fu. So I pleaded with my parents. They don't want me to learn it. But my older brother knew martial arts, no Kung Fu. It's called the Hainan Kung Fu. He taught me a few moves. And then he left because my, my brother is a sailor. He's 20 years older than me. I'm the youngest, he's the oldest. That's, that's kind of a, kind of an age group. So uh, then I learned a few moves and I wasn't happy with it. And then my dad decided to send me to a Ching Wu school. So I think I was about maybe eight years old, around there. Yeah, and that's how I got started. Okay. So when did you start doing Tai Chi? When did I start doing Tai Chi? Okay. When I was training uh, Kung Fu at the time, uh, you know the Chingu school is up in the little hill. So as I was coming down, I saw an old man was teaching Tai Chi. And I thought it was interesting. So I went and talked to him and I said, uh, I want to come and learn Tai Chi. He said, no, Tai Chi is not for, for kids. It's not for young people, it's for the older people to learn. I said, no, 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 I saw some middle-aged people and I want to learn too. Because I saw them doing the pushing hands, you know, we're doing the the pushing hand. I said, I want to learn that. Say no, no, no. You have to learn the form first if you want. So I signed up. I was older already by then. I was probably uh, maybe 16. Yeah, around 16. So I went to his class. And, uh, you know, I, I learned very fast because I have a Kung Fu background. So I just look at all my see him, copy him, and go to the corner and start training. And I'll try to bribe one of the see him. Can you teach me faster? Can you teach me? And then in about maybe two and a half, three months, I finished the form. That's 108 move. So uh, then I told the master, I said, look, I'm, I'm ready. I want to learn push hand. He said, no. If you want to learn, I'll teach you Kung Fu. I said, what kind of Kung Fu? He said, Northern Shaolin Kung Fu. That's what I learned. So I showed him some Qing Kung Fu. He likes it. But then he showed me some of the stuff. And it's similar, because I was 16 years old. I didn't know better. So I didn't want to learn, so I quit. Then I came to America when I was 20 plus 2021 to go to college here. And then, uh, of course, I start teaching Kung Fu. And then I have a partner here in Dallas that we're gonna do martial arts together. Uh, I'm gonna teach Kung Fu, he's gonna teach Tai Chi. I have a car accident, really serious car accident. Right there on Plano Road and Apollo, I'll never forget that. I was working for Texas Instrument at that time the accident. The car crashes and I was kind of pronounced gone or something and somehow I wake up. And then my partner noticed I got injured. He told me, maybe you should start doing Tai Chi. So I started doing Tai Chi. I was 29 years old at that time. 29 years old. So that's how I officially started Tai Chi. And don't ask how old your seafood is. He's old. <laughs> okay. Okay. Where and why did you start doing Kung Fu? Where? I already said. Yeah. Yeah, I learned it in Chingu. Officially, I learned in Chingu. Before that, I learned it from my brother. The Chingu school in Malaysia. In Malaysia. In Malaysia. We have the, uh, one of the biggest Kung Fu school in the country. Uh, every state have a Chingu school. Malaysia have 13 states. So every state go on, so 13 Chingu schools there. Yeah, and they have a big gym in there. And they're celebrating. In about two years, they're celebrating the 100 years anniversary. That's how old they are. Wow. Yeah. What do you learn about Kung Fu? What do I love about Kung Fu? What do you love about Kung Fu? Let me ask you first. Um, I like that it's teaching you how to 
What, what make you want to win Kung Fu? You answer that first. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I want to make you. Well, I want to learn self-defense so I can defend myself against oh, other people. That's good. And I'm just happy to live. I don't know, maybe your mom asks you to come? <laughs> or your dad asks you to come? Well, Well, why I want to learn Kung Fu is because I watch a lot of movies. You know, we watch Bruce Lee movie, we watch a lot of those Chinese, the Wang Yu music, you know, uh, movie. We watch a lot of those things. So I want to be like those guys. And I want to be good. Uh, I always uh, enjoy watching people doing some fighting arts, that kind of thing. So, and because my brother is into martial arts, and my second brother was also into martial arts. So we always talk about martial arts. We don't talk about video games. So that's why I'm interested at that time. At that time. Then later on, I found out it's a lot more than that. How many questions you got? 200? <laughs> Uh, what kind of magazine they interview me? There's a magazine in China. You probably saw it in the front. front there. There's, a, there's, a, there's a twins of me in there. My brother was in there. No, it's me actually. There's a twin photo on there. That's one of the China uh, magazine they interview me. And then the Kung Fu magazine uh, interview me. And then they also Kung Fu articles, but it's not an interview. They asked me to write an article. There's a good article about line dance that I wrote. I can't find it. I can't find an article anymore. It's in. A, it's it's on the other kung fu magazine called uh, the Inside Kung Fu magazine, and there uh, another is a Tai Chi magazine. I wrote. So the interview was actually in the Kung Fu Tai Chi magazine. There is one interview in uh, in in Peru. It's in Spanish, and somebody translate for me. Do you know who? Who's a Spanish speaking dad here? Carlos, uh, Uncle Carlos, Uncle Carlos, uh, translate uh, the interview for me. Wow. Yeah, Carlos, uh, they did that, and I think in Colombia also, uh, I went to a, a TV interview on a, one of the TV channel live. Uh, that was about Tai Chi, though. It was not about Kung Fu. Yeah. Wow, students helping you out. Yes. What's my vision? I want you to be an instructor. That's my vision. Well, I think uh, um, to to tell the people about Chimu, uh, it's better now because they make a lot of movies. Uh, actually, they make a lot of movies about Chimu in the past. You probably don't remember them. I'm sure your mom remember them. Your mom watched this Bruce Lee movie. You know? It's called the the Chinese Connection. They call it, but I think they call it Feast of Fury. It's about Bruce Lee came back, and then his master died. And that photo was a master of the of a grandmaster on the wall. It's about his father Ching Wu. Uh, somebody poisoned him. He wanted to take revenge. That, that 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 kind of stuff. So people now getting to understand Ching Wu, and we said, oh, Bruce Lee movie, then you know right away. Or we say Jet Li movie. Jet Li also make a movie on that, so they know about the Ching Wu. Um, before I have to use Tai Chi, because everybody know about Tai Chi, you know. I mean, if you're sick or you're not healthy, the doctor said, go do some Tai Chi. <laughs> so everybody thinks Tai Chi is for health, everybody do Tai Chi. So I'm using Tai Chi to travel around the world to teach it. At the same time, I embrace them with the Chimu philosophy, you know. Because Chimu is a very important organization because Chimu specialize on uh, making sure the kids have an education, and also have martial art training. They go together. That way, you become a scholar and a warrior. You're an educated warrior. Yes, yes. So, uh, so the vision for the next five years, I was hoping that McCone and the rest of the instructor are ready to take over some responsibility for me. And of course, you take McCone responsibility as we go. You know, I'm gonna grow old with all the dads and the moms. But, but I think we are moving forward. 
I think we have tournaments in China. Uh, we celebrated 100 years anniversary nine years ago, uh, 10 years ago actually. And then this year, we celebrate the 110 years of the founding of Chibu. That's how old we are. Wow. I know Invitation to teach overseas. Yes. And what did you teach about and what countries have you been to? My goal uh, is to go to 30 countries. At least. At least. 30 countries. I think I went to maybe 20 now, around there. 20 countries. Um, it is easier to teach Tai Chi than teach Kung Fu. Why is that? Because I can just go there. But somebody have no martial art background or no exercise background, they don't get no touch. Right? You can just stand there and follow. Your mom can do it, everybody can do it. So it's easier that way. But while I'm teaching them, I also talk to them about my martial art background. That's where Chi comes in. So it, it's like not I'm going there just to teach Tai Chi. So I'm going there to teach it so that they also know the, the other part of the Chinese martial art culture, which is Kung Fu besides Tai Chi. So I went to 20 countries. Uh, I think I've been traveling for the last five years. I think last year I traveled the most. That's why you hardly see me here. Uh, not to say I don't want you all know. I have to do this because I feel like while I'm still young, I think I am, that I can travel. So why not I do it now? So I can meet different people and different people can learn the Chinese culture, which is Chinese martial arts. Holy school, like this is your school, and yeah. you're teaching all these people here. Yeah. Spread around. around. So this is our headquarters. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. yeah. Uh, how do you adapt to different students at different countries? And do you speak their languages? Uh, no, some places I do. It's kind of hard to adapt. I learn a lot by traveling overseas to teach them because everybody have a different cultural way of learning things. Uh, I have people that say, oh, don't teach me, just just do it, and let me follow you. A lot of people like that. Uh, I, I, I don't like that. I like to teach you so that you remember it, so you do your homework, you don't just copy me, especially for Tai Chi, you know. So it's kind of hard, like, I have to use what we call the Confucius way. You know anything about Confucius? Confucius is one of our Chinese great thinkers. You know, it's like a thinker. That he know about life, he know about philosophy, he know about everything about life. He had a system way of teaching you. Like you learn A, B, C, and then he put all the words together. Martial art had the same way. If you don't do it right, stop, stop all over again, stop, stop all over again, repeat, 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 again, repeat, repeat. You know? So it's kind of very boring, but that's how we were taught in the olden days. To be good, you have to repeat until you get better each time. Yeah, to practice, basically. So uh, it's kind of hard when you teach Tai Chi in overseas when you're teaching older people or maybe people who are not understanding how exercise works. It, it becomes boring, you know? It's boring. So they may not want to do it. So you want to make it exciting for them. So I would like, just teach it, follow me, follow me, follow me, until they get good at it. Ha, let's look at it. You know, break it down. And then they, they probably would like it that way because they think they know it already, but they don't. Okay. What is the difference between Qingwu and other Chinese martial arts? Ah, good question. What's the difference between Qingwu and other martial arts? Qingwu was formed, let me talk about how Qingwu was formed first, then why is it different? Qingwu was formed in Shanghai, China. The reason why it was formed is because at that time it was the Opium War. You know about the Opium War? Did you study your history? Yeah, those time Opium War, that's the time when China is very weak. And uh, uh, the British sold the opium to the Chinese people at the time. And the people were smoking opium. Opium is like drugs. So everybody get weak. And uh, so the country got worried about this thing. Uh, then one, uh, there were no historical definition who challenged uh, the Chinese Kung Fu master. He just said that, oh, the Chinese people are weak. So can you challenge me? in your martial art did you know. I'm willing to take a challenge from any Chinese that want to challenge me. He's uh, from a Western country. There's no proof which country to come from. Some people say it's from Russia, some people say 
he's from Germany, some people say he's from England, but there's somebody, okay, that want to take a challenge with any Chinese master who dare to go out there and challenge him. But everybody was scared, because if you lose, that's it, right? Our founder went out there, Oh, Yen Jiang. Qing Wu founder name is Oh Yen Jiang. He went up and challenged him and defeated him. He became a hero. He became a hero in Shanghai. Everybody remember him. He's not from Shanghai though. He's from Tianjin, he's from another city. Okay. Because he heard about the challenge. Nobody dared to challenge him. One of the business person, a rich person, bought him a train ticket and took him there. Of course, he became his students later. Took him there and challenged this person and defeated him. He became famous overnight. He became a superhero. Okay. So they want to remember this event. So, but he's a very humble man. He's a very nice man. He said, my defeat of him is not to show I'm better, not to show I'm better than all the martial artists. No. It's because I felt somebody needed to go and do the job. So he did. But what he wants to do is to gather all the Kung Fu people, all the Chinese master together and create a school or an organization where all the kids, all the teenagers can come and learn martial art and to be strong again. And the slogan is to be to have education and martial art to be strong and stay out of drugs. That was his thing. So it become Successful. Yeah. Really yes. 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 So that's his his thing. That's why Jing Wu means Jing Wu. Jing Wu means the best, the number one, the very good essence. Wu means martial arts together. The best in the martial arts. So we have different. Uh, he recruited. Um, he consulted actually with different masters to come in. Okay, now I can tell you how I got involved with that. Maybe you have a question, so I'm gonna finish this. This question, if you don't have it, I'm gonna give it to you anyway. <laughs> if you have it, I'm not gonna talk about it. But anyway, so, so he recruited all these people together, but he knows that the Shaolin system is big. It's well known, it's there. Everybody talk about it. It has to be good. So he recruited a Shaolin master there called Zhao Lian. That's in Chinese, okay? Zhao Lianhe. Zhao Lianhe is my teacher's uncle. My teacher's uncle. Got it? Ho uh, Yanjiang invited him to come to uh, what he call uh, create a curriculum for Chimu. So Ho Yanjiang is a very nice man. He didn't create any curriculum. He invited him because he's well known and he had the Shaolin system. So he came in and created the curriculum for the Chimu. Then at the same time, uh, that's a Shaolin system. They also invite two other systems, very famous in Shanghai. It just happened they're all Northern Shaolin system. Okay, Northern Shaolin. We're not learning Southern Shaolin. If you have a question, I can answer that later. But it's Northern Shaolin. So he also invite the famous Eagle Claw uh, King. He's called the Eagle Claw King. He's the number one Eagle Claw. Uh, uh, his name is Chen Zhen. Okay, Chen Zhen, Cantonese Chen Zhen. Okay, invite him to be in charge of the uh, Eagle Claw system. Then he also invite the uh, another teacher with a praying mantis system called Luo Guang Yu, Luo Guang Yu, to come into that. So Qing had three major systems. So what's the one? What's the first one? Shaolin system, Eagle Claw system, and the praying mantis system. Okay, in, in, in this organization, okay? So, but everybody that come and join the school have to learn the Shaolin system. So they have to learn the Shaolin 10 form. That's what you're learning here. You learn the Tantui, you learn the Kung Yi Chen, the big fighting, you know, the, the broad sword, all that, it's in there. So that's what you're learning now, originally from Shanghai, 110 years ago. But of course, the art is way back, hundreds of hundred years ago, okay? Did I answer your question? Yes. I think maybe yeah. I gave too much. <laughs> How is Kung Fu different from Tai Chi? How is Kung Fu different from Tai Chi? You know, the Tai Chi is very slow, though. 
It's very boring. That's the difference. <laughs> I can see your boring face when you learn about it. You are better though. Some of the kids look so bored. I said, when is it going to finish? I don't think it's boring. I don't think you think it's boring. But uh, you can see some of the kids are like, when are they going to finish? My, my dad is waiting for me out there. You can see the face. Finish it fast so I can get out of there. Because it's boring. Because it's slow. Because when you're slow, you have to pay attention, right? Yeah, you have to focus. You have to focus. And you've got to have discipline. You've got to have patience. And develop everything. You go so slow, it never ends. <laughs> no, inshallah, you just do it and you're finished. So, Kung Fu, it's external. You know, external punching. Then, Tai Chi, it's internal. It's more, you internalize the move and you just do the move. You know, you internalize it. You know, like you make it, everything is internal. You just go mind the floor and you move. And then for Kung Fu, you use external, like you punch and kick and you go really strong. That's a simple definition. Okay. Yeah, inside. You feel more peaceful, right? Yeah. Feel more calm, right? Yeah. So, so it's good they put together. They complement each other. I see that. Yeah. That yeah, one of the dad over there don't come from Tai Chi. Gotta be careful. He knows. <laughs> <laughs> he knows. How one decide If they have time, they can do both. But uh, as a as a young kid, a young adult, I think kung fu is better. So you understand the basic fighting strategy and the basic stance, punching and kicking, and you get to stretch. You get to use a lot of your 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 external muscles and that kind of stuff. Uh, I think when we get older, I think Tai Chi is good. Because we need the mind and the body to work better when we get older. And plus, Tai Chi can help you when you get old. Uh, you start losing your memory, it helps because you're remembering the move. It helps balance, it helps your blood pressure, it helps everything. So if you have time, you learn more. What do I want my students to learn from me? I want the student to have discipline and to respect people and to grow uh, to be a better person. I'll give an example. Uh, I was just telling uh, Alvin, can I use you as an example? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was telling Alvin uh, just yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it was very interesting. You know, you know Paolo and Nielsen? He's been in school for more than five years now. About five years, right? Or so. Yeah. Or even longer. Six, 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 yeah, five, six, six years. Well, Nelson was little. And listen, Nelson don't listen to anybody. For sure, he don't listen to his dad. <laughs> you know? And sometimes he don't listen to Sifu. You know? It's like, what's wrong with you? My dad don't yell at me. Why are you yelling at me? Why are you telling me what to do? You know? Back then, he's kind of a uh, little lost. He was little. And Paulo was also little, was younger. And uh, when we do line dance and all that, they just stand there and do nothing. We tell him, hey, pick this up. You need to. You need to put everything in the bag. We have to discipline them. But this year, I see a change. You know? I mean, even even last year. But this year is more like they have, they want to have more responsibility. They want to take more action without being told. So they're doing all this thing. That means they're growing the right way. You know, I'm not saying that the school did it all for him, but I'm sure the parents did it. But the school also helped it together. This is what I see. I want to see my kids. I want them to be good kids. I don't. And we can train them. And a lot of my kids are nerdy. Nerdy kids are good to train. You know, some of the dads are nerdy. Your see is nerdy. I'm nerdy too. You know, I don't know this nerdy dad. I'm nerdy. You know, I'm nerdy. So Stone Henry is another one. He's nerdy. When he started off with me, he was chubby when he started off. He liked the story. He was very chubby when he came to school. He was very embarrassed. And he, we tried to train him, and he was like very scared. And, and you probably notice it too that he, he doesn't want to post anything about himself because he have uh, uh, maybe confidence is not there. He's scared, you know. And uh, and then suddenly he learned a pole form. He suddenly got really good at it. So we don't know about you when you come to our school what to give you, but it's and it's like a journey. It's like a process of doing things, you know. Then we see ah okay this is what these kids need, and that's what we're gonna focus on them. It's like line dance, you know, like Beyonce. Uh, Tyler, he liked drumming. We're gonna let him play the drum all he wants. <laughs> then we can develop the skill for him. Then later when he grow up, maybe he get bored. He have, he want to do something else. We we'll let him. 
So the, th the key thing is to train them to be disciplined, to be successful in the life. You don't have to be good in martial art. It'll be nice if you have both. You know, we will teach you in martial art, but that martial art is going to help you to grow up to be a better person to be successful. That's what I want you to be. I want you to be a doctor, so I come and see you for free. <laughs> or a dentist. <laughs> yeah, we all have to see doctors, right? So. Is she going to go to medical school? She wants to be a plastic surgeon. Oh my god, good. <laughs> then I'm going to stay young forever. All right. <laughs> all right, all right, Dad. We're going to stay young, buddy. <laughs> oh, I thought you got a long go. So you have students in America. Yes. And all over the world. What do you want to tell all of your students? Ah, I want to tell all my students. I want them to stay happy. You know, but in order to be happy, you have to be healthy first, correct? Yes. Yeah, you have to be healthy first. I want them to be healthy. So that, how to be healthy? They're going to have a healthy mind by doing good things. Uh, they have to eat correctly. Eat correctly. Don't eat the wrong thing. <laughs> Don't eat all those things that taste good, may not be good for your body. Like chocolate, you know. <laughs> right? I want all of them to eat correctly. So, so healthy is very important. I also want them to have a harmony in their life. Harmony means able to harmonize with people around them, including their parents, including their spouse, including grandparents, their neighbors, and everybody. So if you are, if you are harmonized, if you are healthy, then you're gonna be happy, and you're gonna live long. You'll see, by the way, your seafood plan to live at least 108 years old. So don't worry, I'll be here around for a long time. That's what I want to do. And of course, um, I want Chingu to grow. I don't want Chingu to die in America. It's gone. When I'm not here, I want the next generation to keep it up. Because we started in 1987. Officially. Official. Yeah. I started actually in 1978 in Houston. Officially, we started in 1987, the Chingu school here, 87. So how many years? 32, 33 years? It's 2020, right? Yes. Yeah, so it's 33 years, so it's long. So we want to keep going. And how old are you? 12. 12, there you go. So we'll keep going. It doesn't matter you move to Atlanta, to, to, to New York, your spirit of change should go there. That's what I want to see with my students. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and stay out of trouble. Stay out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good? Yeah, so this is all of the questions. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for, so for giving me a chance to answer your questions. <laughs> and thank you for doing this. This is the first time doing it, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah. Have you seen why you've done this before? Oh, therefore, other people, for the school. For the school. Ah, oh, okay. Good. That's that's for a project. That's a school project, by the way. So you want to show the magazine? Should I sign inside or I don't think you can. Ah, we we'll get a marker pen. I, I cannot. I think I don't think you can write on here. I can do it inside. Ah, how about doing in here the article? Yeah, your article. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This one. Okay. There you go. Can't see it. But. All right. Thank you. I hope you train harder. All right. Okay. We'll take a picture. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Dad. Awesome. Good job. Mucho gracias.